guys, Dr. Spinach here. So, in this video, we are going to be discussing a few differences between scurvy and rickets, but we're going to be exclusively, uh, well, talking about scurvy at the moment, okay? So, since scurvy is a disease that is very rare now, uh, which actually is caused by the deficiency of vitamin C or ascorbic acid, we have actually seen a brief of scurvy in the overview of diseases, right, of the bone, in which I told you that scurvy is actually a problem of collagen, that is protein matrix of the bone, that is protein matrix of the bone. That means it actually has defect where? In cross-linking, in cross-linking of collagen. Which collagen? Of collagen 1. So, if the if the, there is defect in collagen 1 cross linkage then of course the strength of the bone will be decreased because collagen is actually collagen actually is a is present in the matrix which gives the support the strength to the to any structure basically so not only the bones will be affected many structures will be affected including the blood vessels in this case okay so let's see some of the x-ray features that we see in scurvy okay let's also discuss about some of the clinical features in scurvy and let's discuss them in um, ddx that is differential diagnosis with rickets why because in question paper they never ask about scurvy what they ask about is rickets and you have to eliminate scurvy right why do you have to eliminate scurvy because some of the features are similar and uh, and because this is exam right so they will give you some confusing features so let's start the first thing that we need to do is we need to figure out the clinical features well i told you if you remember in the rickets video in the video of rickets disease that is there's something called as rickettsiatic rosary so i'm going to write rickets here and scurvy here something called as rickettsiatic rosary that is seen in rickets similar type of uh, finding which we call it uh, <coughs> scorbutic i think scorbutic something like that rosary and scurvy now both of them will look similar okay but the only difference between these two would be rickettsiatic rosary is painless but scorbutic rosary is painful so the bead like structure seen in rickets is painless on touch but bead like structure seen in scurvy is painful so this is the main difference between scurvy and uh, rickets in terms of clinical features okay the other thing is of course in both the cases well now let's talk about some of the x-ray features in both the cases right there will be we're going to discuss one two three x-ray features the first thing is there is occurrence of uh, line frankel's line okay so I'm going to just going to write down Frankel's line, which will be seen in both of them. Okay, but the only I'm going to show you what Frankel's line is in a while. But when does Frankel's line appear in rickets, and when does it appear in scurvy is an important differential or difference between both of them. What is it? So in rickets, the Frankel's line, which is seen on an on X-ray, which is an X-ray feature, actually appears after the treatment starts. So, it is a prognostic indicator, but in scurvy, it actually appears, it actually dissolves after the treatment starts. So, it is a part of disease. In scurvy, it is a part of disease. In rickets, is a, it is a part of treatment. Okay. So, Frankel's line will be seen in both, one after the treatment, one before the treatment. Okay. Now, and there are some other x-ray features which are exclusively seen in uh, scurvy. These include Wimberger's sign, Wimberger's ring sign to be precise, Wimberger's ring sign. And we also see um, something called as I think pal palkin, palkin spurs. So we have pelican spurs as well that we see. So let's go to the x-ray here and let's talk about all of these. Now, white line of Frankel, we, we say, white line of Frankel, white line of Frankel is a feature both of scurvy as well as um, rickets. But in both of them, in both of them, in rickets and scurvy, the reason of formation of white line is different, okay? 
so in case of rickets it is formed because the bone so this bone over here will look white so let's say so let's consider this as normal bone for now okay uh, so what happens in case of rickets is basically there is less mineralization of the bone right and due to less mineralization of the bone the middle part of the bone basically is not mineralized and when you see it on x-ray it is hypodense and not hyperdense right so this kind of hyperdensity in the middle actually forms a white line which is seen outside and this is kind of like like the cortex basically the in sorry not the cortex the cortex is seen as a white line and well inside the cortex over here everything is black okay and in case of scurvy the similar similar pattern is seen but in this because of defective mineralization in this is because sometimes because of bleeding or it could be because of as well as of course defective cross-linking right so the frankel's line will be seen in both rickets and scurvy okay uh, and well there will be subperiosteal hemorrhage in case of scurvy so i'm just going to change the color so subperiosteal hemorrhage so i i told you that there is defect in collagen linkage now collagen is not only present in bones of course it's present in blood vessels as well so defect in blood vessels cross linkage of collagen will lead to fragile blood vessels which will bleed so this is going to this is this will lead to collection of blood over here and this collection of blood um, is seen as subperiosteal hemorrhage and this is how the bone might look like so okay so this is periosteum and this is the cortex of the bone and this is where the blood is accumulated okay and for the same reason when the blood actually accumulates around the epiphysis so this you see is epiphysis okay so if the blood actually let me change the color to red if the blood actually accumulates around the epiphysis around the epiphysis then this appears black okay uh, basically sorry not black white right and this forms a ring around the epiphysis and this type of sign is known as Wimberger sign so remember what is Wimberger sign the ring is formed around the epiphysis due to the bleeding or hemorrhage that is Wimberger's sign. Then we have, of course, another sign that is called as Palkin spur. Now, if you see over here, Palkin spurs are the spurs that are produced by the metaphysis. Because, of course, epiphysis is not sticking to the metaphysis. So, metaphysis comes out as spurring. Okay. And sometimes it also breaks. So, it leads to Palkin's fractures. Okay. So, this is also seen with, of course, curvy. So, if you can see Wimberger's sign, Palkin spurs, and then scorbut scorbutic zone over here this is the scorbutic zone which is also known as Trimmerfield's zone okay so these are actually this is not very important but of course these are important and then falcon's line is important uh sorry frankel's line is important so if you see all of these basically this is what is curvy okay so i think this is all about scurvy and uh, i don't think there is anything anything else well there's one more thing that i, I can say differentiates both of them when we talk about that so basically serum calcium levels so serum calcium levels in rickets will be low when you do the uh, blood work but over here in this case the serum calcium levels will be normal okay that's all about this video today. Um, I hope you understood the difference between scurvy and rickets and how you can actually find out whether this is scurvy on an x-ray and some of the x-ray features of scurvy as well. In the next video, let's discuss about osteoporosis. Bye-bye and have fun.